Hello there and welcome to episode 8 of my playthrough of the 2018 Hairbrain Schemes Battletech game. Today I'll be tackling Priority Mission 5 on Smithon, or more accurately I believe we're on a moon of Smithon today. So let's go right ahead here and launch contract. And yes, here we are, Anvelt, the first moon of Smithon. As you heard, House Carossus has suffered greatly at the hands of the Directorate. We can't change that, but we can show Lord Carossus that we are his, his allies and that our word can be trusted. We need his help with our data archive, yes, but that isn't why I agreed to this mission. If we are to prevail against the Directorate, I must unite the Founding Hounds houses under the Restoration Banner. Without their support, we'll have no way of replacing our losses. Understood, Lady Arano. Let's get into the specifics of this job he's given us. I seem to remember something about the dropship. She's called the New Grange. She's a transport vessel, ob ob ostensibly civilian, named for an old line of yard ships. The New Grange has been certified for commercial flight in the Directorate, the Capellan Confederation and the Torian Concordat. In all other ways, she's completely unremarkable. At least that's what her official paperwork says. And let's just see what it says here. Uh-huh, and what's the real story? The New Grange is running weapons into the Oregon Reach to supply the Directorate's war effort. Her crew has been using an old commercial port on Anvelt to fuel up between ships. Ships like this one could help to explain why the Directorate's unexpected strength of arms. It's in our interest to destroy it. According to the intel we've been given, the New Grange is carry carrying more armour than any Union-class dropship has any right to. Attacking her directly will be a waste of time. Thankfully, Lord Madeira has found us an alternate approach. The Anvil fueling station was designed for civilian use. It isn't a hardened target and its components can't withstand a sustained attack. If we go in while the new Grange is refueling and blow the station's primary, primary fuel reservoir, her armour won't count for much. The resulting explosion will smash her like an egg. Sounds like a workable plan. Let's move forward. Hang on, boss. If this job was so easy as blowing up a fuel tank, Carossus would have done it himself already. So what's the catch? I mean, why send us after such an easy target? Lord Carossa sent the last remnants of his personal guard after the New Grange two weeks ago, a, hand, a lance of hardened mech warriors. They were summarily destroyed, a complete loss. There were no survivors. That doesn't worry me. We can handle anything that they throw at us. I admire your confidence, but we should approach this drop with an abundance of caution. Bring the strongest lance you can field and keep your eyes open while you're on the moon's surface, and I'd recommend bringing a heat effect efficient lance if possible. Anvelt's atmosphere and climate will quickly overwhelm your heat sinks if you're not careful. No time like the present, I'll assemble my team. And I'll be with you on comms. Good hunting, Oculus. Right, so let's just clear all these bays so I can discuss what we're going to be bringing today. First up, and as always, the first bay will be occupied by uh, Oculus, the, uh, the mercenary commander, mercenary captain, whatever you want to call him. We don't technically have a... Um, a company, so he's not a captain. You need 12 max really to be a captain. Um, so I don't know. We do, we're not part of the official military structure though, so it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, now I'd usually bring him the enforcer um, for Oculus, but I'm actually going to swap him out today for the Griffin. The Griffin has got uh, much better movement than the enforcer. It's a much quicker mech. I um, think it's got an extra uh, jump jet as well. Yes, it does. And a lot more firepower on there, but it lacks the range. So that's what the you know the payoff is. But there is a reason why I'm going to bring the Griffin today, which I'll talk about when I go through the rest of the lance. Uh, where's Oculus? Here he is. So again, Oculus is becoming a really quite decent mech warrior now. That's eights and sevens, so doing well. And he's got always three skills. I think he had them in the last mission that I recorded as well. In terms of loadout for the Griffin today, it's three M lasers and ten SRMs. That gives it a really nice fire firepower level, but very, very little range. So you're gonna have to really get in there, jump in to do some skirmishing, and then it's like a ton of heat management on there as you would expect, because we're gonna be running very hot. So we're really kind of going against uh, Lady Arano's advice here. The lance that I always bring tend to be hot, so such is life. It's not too bad. I mean, heat sinking 30, so we've got no heat sinks on there. We've got exchanges and heat banks, and we alpha strike at 50. So if we are jumping, we'll probably have to turn off a lot of the, well, at least two of the M lasers. Next up, we'll bring our two, like, what are called the big boys, the big tanks. So that's going to be the Marauder, first of all. And in the Marauder, I think we'll have a Dark Star today. Um, 
this Marauder is incredible. It's doing a fantastic job for me. It's such a nice like synergy to have UAC 20 double plus weaponry on there and quite a bit of support weaponry as well because you're never really going to fire them all together. You do, maybe once a game you'll like alpha strike with it when you've got no heat and you just need to make that kill. But generally speaking, the UAC 20 is a good enough weapon just to fire in its own right. It's basically eclipses most damage ranges of most of the uh, like mechs in the game. So you can you this cycle between using the UAC 20 on its own and then you'll swap out using the uh, energy weaponry. If you're firing all those together, it generates a bucket load of heat as you would expect because even the UAC 20 generates 48 heat, which is insane. But remember, it has to do that because it's so powerful. You know, it's uh, it, shot, it fires two huge AC-20 shots together. So, yeah, it's, you know, if, if it didn't generate that much heat, it would be completely broken and uh, it would just, you know, make the game unplayable, really, because you could just bring uh, two or three of those in a, in a lance and you'd just destroy them. So, destroy your opposition. So, the, the payoff is, obviously, that it runs very, very hot. Uh, next up, oh, I don't think there's anything else here to talk about really now. Just loads of heat management, two M lasers and two ER M lasers. I think I was running that uh, last time as well, so not much has changed there. Warhammer next. So if the Marauder is like our finisher mech because it's got the UAC twenty, and the Marauder is the mech that strips off all the armor and does physical attacks, soaks up damage, so more a traditional tank. Uh, two snub PPCs, two M pulses, two extend uh, ERS lasers. And another an array of heat management as you would expect. Um, let's put I think we'll put Vortex in the Warhammer today. He's got the good gut skill there, so he should be able to handle an insane amount of heat that this mech generates. So it's eighty five, and that's after we've put on like uh, a heat an exchanger double plus an exchanger uh, plus. Um, what's the Marauder heat efficiency like today? Yeah, okay, that's even worse actually, ninety seven to thirty. However. As I said, because you are going to be alternating between weapons, it doesn't really matter much for the Marauder because we're never going to be alpha striking. So you can kind of put that, that alpha strike down to maybe like, what, 50, something like that, 50, 60. Next up, um, now I'm, I'm not going to, again, I'm going to change my tactics a little bit. I usually would bring two jump careful max. I'm actually going to bring like a traditional support mech this time. So there are really two options with support mechs in this game, or traditional support mechs. You can say that, you know, there are mechs dedicated to support fire. In this case, though, what I'm talking about is a mech that either does indirect uh, LRM fire, or well, it can do direct LRM fire as well, or a, a shutdown mech. And that's basically to create an abundance of heat in the opposition uh, mech and shut it down through heat. So you can see we've got the fire starter to do one of those rolls. So four uh, flamers, an S pulse, an extended range uh, S laser, and an M pulse double plus. That's just for extra accuracy because the M laser is on the uh, the center torso of the fire starter, so you don't get the advantage of the extra accuracy that you get on the arms. So if I am running M lasers on the torsos or the center torso, then I usually will try get the accuracy bonus ones. Uh, very very low level of firepower but it does amazing like heat damage with those four flamers however for this mission i think this chap is a little bit too lightweight um certainly would be an option but i just this mission has got like an end boss in it and i don't really envisage running little bernie the fire starter and he's like relatively low armored self into the the fray of some pretty like intimidating heavy mechs. The other option, therefore, is the uh, the trebuchet, which is what about as close as I get to doing like dedicated LRM platforms. So it's got an LRM ten double plus and an LRM fifteen plus and an M laser on there just as a support weapon. Uh, the heat efficiency on this mech is very good. So you can see it does forty four on an alpha strike. Um, I've not got any heat uh, like like heat sinks or anything like that on there i'll just be doing indirect fire with lrms and if we do have to go in for a like an alpha strike and use the m pulse there'll be kind of an optimum range where we can get that but probably won't be using the m pulse very much so we'll probably be running very very uh, like cool with this particular mech um so i'm actually going to bring the trebuchet today 50 tons 
his weight class doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is he'll be sticking back in the line and shooting the, the LRMs. But I just feel more comfortable doing that than actually bringing like the fire starter, which is a shame because I would like to eventually run uh, like one of the shutdown mechs, and I probably will at some point. But I don't think today is the right day for it. And we'll put uh, we'll put Code in the trebuchet today. He's got pretty decent tactics. I think out of everyone left, the highest we've got is six on tactics. The reason that is important is because it, you get a benefit to indirect fire. So that's when you can't see directly, but another when it's someone in your lands can see an enemy and you can like fire over terrain. The higher the tactics are, the, the better bonus they get to LRM strikes. And that the fact that I'm bringing the trebuchet kind of supplements why I'm bringing the griffin because that griffin with its weapon loadout, three uh, M lasers and basically SRM10, that can act as a tank with that weapon loadout. It does really nice level of firepower. I mean, you can see there it does uh, 185 uh, max damage. So it can like go in for the skirmish, which means that kind of in that final battle, the griffin can kind of join the fray, maybe, maybe do some skirmishing outflanking and use the two tanks to do the mainstay of the work. But I feel much more comfortable doing that with the Griffin and trying to kind of supplement the fact that I don't, I'm not going to be doing my usual tactics about manoeuvring. It will be using LRM fire and then just maybe using the Griffin a little bit to position the enemy and then using the two like um, the big heavy tank mechs that we've got to run up the centre. Just, it's just a slightly different play on tactics, but still not a million miles away. It's still kind of using all the kind of options available to us in the game, as opposed to just like running for big beast mechs with the biggest guns we can get our hands on. So let's go ahead and deploy. So we're in the uh, Martian like bio today. These, this is one of the most problematic bios in this game if you like heat and i do like heat so i don't particularly like the martian uh, bios it makes things interesting though and it's certainly a good like uh, extra feature in the game it, if you're in like lunar or desert or you know any anywhere that's hot basically you find it more difficult to sink heat that makes a lot of sense Likewise, you can find those missions in like the polar region or the jungle uh, where you get like advantages to heat sinking. So come see, come sa. Um, depends which area you are fighting in. I tend to just play hot regardless. I'll just put on more heat management systems uh, because I do love my like lost tech weaponry as most people do, like impulses and extended range mediums and uh, uh, UAC weaponry and they all generate more heat. So... It's just something I have to deal with. Um, anyway, there's a lot of activity on the ground, Commander. It looks like the new Grange is being pre prepped for launch. You're going to have to, uh, you're going to have a tight time to be able to get in there and blow the station's fuel reservoir before it lifts off. I'm seeing turret in pl emplacements and light battle mech activity on the ground, but it appears that the security detail we were warned about is off site for now. Uh, Samira will be monitoring her sensors for any sign of incoming dropships. She's got that right, Commander. If I see anything, you'll be the first to know, and I'd advise you to be wary of the secondary landing pod up here on the ridge. If I were dropping a defensive lance, that's where I'd do it. So yeah, this I mean, this map's gorgeous, actually. You've got the big dropship there, and all the kind of smoking detritus of the Martian like sphere here. I love that terrain, like all the like the spiky um, like mountain ranges in the back. It's very cool. Um, in Martian terrain, there are no trees, obviously. Uh, but you do get these like whirlwinds, which give you a defensive bonus. They basically just act like trees. Um, there are some there's nice bits of water as well in this mission. So that's good to know. Um, you see how quickly the Griffin can run that. It really is a wick little mech. Um, now, the reason that I brought the Griffin was to kind of take out a... Um, an early it's not a secondary objective um but it's something if you blow it up quite early on it makes your life a lot easier and that's this uh, turret generator over here so we'll run the griffin on this right hand side here and then we'll run everyone else down this little ravine here like near this little um like water source at the bottom so we've got uh, one mech upon us already we see we've got some turrets there Again, Oculus should be able to take these turrets out relatively straightforward. Heat management there is good. I'm actually very impressed by that, given that um, we are in this Martian bio. Um, 
don't think I'm going to need to alpha strike here though, so we'll drop a little bit, save a little bit of heat. Obviously, if we are jumping and firing, that will cause significantly more heat. So there goes two of the annoying turrets. I think the other turrets are... I don't even know if there are any other turrets, actually. I think there are. They're either over here or over here. I can't remember. Um, right, so let's run... Oh, Code here is in the LRM platform. So we got a little commando. And we got some already some lovely percentages there. So you can see we're in a bit of a sweet spot. And we've got that like elevation, which I think might be giving us a little bit of advantage to fire. Again, heat management there is lovely. So this should hurt him quite a bit. Yes, very nice. And we're taking some flak there. I think that may have been from an AC5 or an AC2. It must have been, because an AC10 uh, or 20 wouldn't have been in range. And this commando is um, toast. Uh, we'll save our ammo. We're not going to use the UAC20. Remember, uh, we've got 15 points of ammo. And uh, each shot does two points of ammo. You know, or expends two points of ammo. So we're going to have to be slightly careful. I probably won't be using that very much uh, in the early phase of this particular mission. So we'll hit him with all our secondary weaponry. You can see this. You can see that's what the secondary weaponry produces in terms of heat. If we just have a look at the UAC-20, you see that barely does any. So what you can do is you can kind of do mix and matches like a UAC-20 and an Empul. So, you know, I mean, if you want to Alpha Strike, you can. But you can see... I always think with Alpha Striking, if you're going above that 50% threshold, which that is just, I think that's probably about 60% of the heat we can manage, um, you then kind of leave your options on the next turn a little bit limited. So, not necessarily, because we know we won't be firing the UAC-20 um, turn after turn because of the recall um, like penalty that we get. But I like to, if I'm running a big hot mech like this, I tend to like alternate between secondary weapon and primary weapons. Ooh, four lovely hits there. So there goes, there goes uh, his right side and his left leg. So he's not going to last much longer at all. And uh, the Warhammer should just be able to finish this chap off, I think, quite easily. Yeah, I think we'll we'll go in just with the dual uh, PPC snubs here, just to finish him off. That was overkill, but hell, never mind. It wasn't generating that much heat. So that's the scout mech killed, which is good. Um, now, Oculus. We'll keep him in the um, like the whirlwind thing here, um, just for the defensive bonus. Ooh, and we've got a panther. So we'll skirmish you, I think. I'll be slightly careful with that right arm with the PPC on there, but given that he's in the trees, I'm sure he'll be fine. And ooh, we've got a wolverine now. So, see if we can... Oh, unfortunately, we are out of range um, for the impulse up on high here. But let's just give him a, a cheeky LRM spam. Nice. And what's that? Was that Shadowhawk, I think? That was a terrible, terrible choice. Just um, indirect firing us with an LRM5. It's a waste of a turn. Uh, we'll keep in the water here just to really keep our heat levels down. What should we do here? Let's, again, I'm not going to fire the um, the AC-20. These mechs are just terribly armoured. You can see they are listed as ramshackles, so they've only got 25% of their usual armour. So let's just, again, we'll secondary fire you. We'll take the 50% like dice roll with the impulses we got one of them maybe and our big lad now he should at least finish off this arm which i think that's where the ac5 is if i'm not mistaken yeah yes it is that's where it, oh there we go destroyed and um, the shadow hot will also have a, an ac5 i believe yes And that's fine, we got a nice defensive bonus there uh, by being in the, the whirlwind. So I'm more than happy to soak up a little bit of flak with Oculus. He can take that for sure. That's the wrong side, unfortunately. We've um, He's still got the PPC, which is slightly annoying. However, I might be able to indirect fire him and finish him off with code. 
And that was, uh, see, 40 damage there instead of 45. Um, if you're wondering why, it's because the Marauder has got the inbuilt like Lance command module, I think they call it. And that gives you a really nice advantage to, um, uh, to like a defensive bonus. So it basically negates 10% of the enemy's um, like attack on you, which is nice. Let's see if we can finish off this Panther with a nice LRM spam. Lovely stuff. I did kind of, I was thinking about this mission beforehand and I thought the LRM spam would be a good option in this mission just because of how, um, like, you, you're you coming across like very night, like tight, narrow ravines and that means that like, you're gonna be, like we're doing here, we're going like face on face with the enemy, but we can sit back with somebody and do that LRM fire, which just seemed to me like a decent idea. And obviously I think it is. Now, um, you see now, now look at that, if we're Alpha Strike, we'll just kill it. So I actually just want to finish this guy off, I think. So let's just um, Precision Strike his center torso. Oh, we didn't kill him, which is quite surprising <laughs> with, the, uh, with the UAC 20, but uh, yeah, he's absolutely on his last legs here. So let's just, uh, just snub PPC him. There he goes. So that's, um, yeah, that's the first lands taken out, but they were really ramshackle, like they are no challenge at all, really. Now what we need to do is there are, um, there is a turret generator over here, and yeah, you can see there are two, um, t I think the other turret will be on there, I'd imagine. I think it will be linked up to two. And we have to then destroy this fuel pumping station. You can see, we have got a timer here, but I haven't even really talked about it because we ain't gonna run out of time, so it's fine. Um, let's jump Oculus down here, and he can then just brace himself. See, so he generated a little bit of heat there, even with that jump. So it's um, does uh, jumping in Martian, you know, territory when you uh, have five jump jets really does make you run very, very hot. Uh, now let's just can we get into range of this turret generator? No, we can't. So we'll just might as well take uh, this turret out by itself and we'll run Dark Star in here and can you now just do as a solid and take this out ammo levels are still fine there um, 285 uh, missiles left and we shoot 25 on a well, a missile I'll strike without the impulse. Uh, yeah, well, why not? I'm not going to try and calculate it. Let's see if we can blow it up. There we go. Now, I'm just going to play this a little bit conservatively. So we're not actually going to fire at the um, fuel pumping station here until everyone's in position. So we've got seven turns to do this. So I'm just going to walk everyone up and sink all the heat. Oh, the majority of the heat. Don't have to necessarily sink all of it. Now, Oculus is going to. There's. Um, let me just. Let me do a little bit of prep here. Just making um, some defensive terrain for him to sit in. You've got a build. You've got a couple of buildings. There. I think that turret generator that we destroyed should offer some protection as well. damage so luckily we've got the plus variant there with the extra damage so as long as we hit with it we'll blow it up there we go so it just gives him a little bit of like fallback protection if he needs it when this um this lance that um that victoria espinosa is going to turn up with to try and ruin our day all my big lads i'm just going to put in the center here at the bottom and Let's just start, we'll start chiseling our way at this uh, fuel pumping station. Um, 
So, unidentified smugglers, New Grange captain. This is the captain of the New Grange. Hold your, damn fi hold your fire, damn it. We're a civilian transport, not a military dropship. I know what you are. Power down your engines and surrender, or your ship will be destroyed. I can't do that. I repeat, hold your fire. There are unarmed people on this vessel. We've got a hold full of passengers, and you'll be murdering them if you destroy that tank. I already know what your ship is carrying, and it isn't civilians, Captain. I'm giving you one last chance to surrender. If you refuse, what happens next will be on your head, not mine. Listen to reason, and power down, now. They've cut the comms feed, Lady Arano. I'm picking up increased activity on my sensors. They're making a run for it. Then they've left us no choice. We're blowing the fuel reservoir. Just keep chiseling away at this thing. Um, if we blow it up now, it's fine. Everyone's kind of... Uh, oh, okay. Are they going to... Okay, I didn't know if the... Okay, this is fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I thought it might have landed them, like, on that turn without giving us any, um, like prior notification but they're not doing that now dark step oh actually we'll do it with vortex so he can just move a little bit forward because he's the warhammer and he's definitely my like damage um taker <laughs> he's the one that i like to kind of soak up all the flak That's done it. The new Grange is down. That should satisfy our obligation to Lord Carossus. Heads up, Commander. Energy. Oh, energy. Enemy dropship coming in hot. Ooh. That's a nasty looking lance. Incoming transmission. What's that? A dragon, a centurion. The, my most hated mech. And uh, is that a fire starter? I think it's a fire starter. It's what I was going to bring, so good choice. Uh, you, Phil, do you have any idea what you've just done? You'll pay for that with your life, mercenary Phil. Victoria, if I'd have known you'd be here, I'd have taken to the field myself. A pity you didn't. We could have ended the war here and now. I suppose I'll have to content myself with your prize mercenaries. Watch as I tear them to shreds. Yeah, the K2 catapult. Um, I, imagine a food that you love, right? Like, let's say pizza. Most people like pizza, right? And imagine that someone said to you, I'm going to make you a pizza, and then they put on, like, the topping, everything you hate. Or, like, something you're allergic to, or something like that. That's the K2 catapult to me. Like, I love the catapult, but what the Koreans did to that catapult was utter heresy. Like, jamming two PPCs on the side of its heed is uh, just, just, ugh, makes me feel ill. Um... Anyway, uh, we've got to be slightly careful here. You don't, I think with this mission, it's best just to play a little bit conservatively and let them come to you. So we're just going to hold back uh, for now. I don't want to get anyone too kind of exposed. And here is this horrible catapult. And she missed both PPC shots, which is good for me. But that will really start cooking her already. This is the worst, like, bio to bring a K2 catapult. <laughs> Uh, she's really exposed herself there as well, so that's not going to bode well. Uh, there's also there's a Centurion that has an AC-10, yep, and a, a Dragon with an AC-5. That fire starter could be quite problematic for us as well, given the, the heat in this particular scenario. Now, I think what I'll do in the first instance here is... Hmm... I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna lead them on a little bit of a merry chase, I think, with Oculus. I'm jumping back in, but I'm gonna do some sensor locking. Not keen on that dual PPC nonsense, so we'll try and like hit her up quite early on and take at least one of them out. Warhammer's doing his job there, soaking up the damage. Now you can. Yeah, let's put you there. That'll take one evasion pip off. We can um, just start like slicing into the um, armor here. Unfortunately, we didn't hit with the M pulse. I'm glad that they're targeting the trebuchet because the trebuchet has not been hit yet, and I've I usually always armor my mechs up very well, so it's good that at least you know one of them, um, you know, it takes at least one shot because that's kind of a free shot for me. Now, I think we're going to really work um, Miss Espinosa here, and we're going to actually do a full alpha strike uh, on this chap. Um, 
Let's go for Santa Tarso, see if we can get it. <laughs> oh, very funny. So that just made me laugh. Like, dual uh, UAC 20 show. That is how much I hate the, K2, the K2 catapult. Uh, must die. Must die. Um, that's They've lost a lot of their threat here now. Uh, like, joking aside, they're really toast. The only thing they've got left that can do me any damage is the AC 10 on the Centurion. And he's hanging back with the Centurion, so I don't think it'll even be in range yet. So, instead... Um, hmm... Just, I'm slightly conscientious about that fire star as well because he can really do some shutdown damage on the Warhammer. Yeah, let's go. We'll do another precision strike here, and we'll just try and take out one side of the fire star. Nearly. Somebody else might be. No, they won't. He, he will be moving next, won't he? Ah, good. He didn't go for the Warhammer, which is good. That's fine. I think the fire start will become the priority target now and we're going to now come back into the fray with cheeky oculus so again um just trying to position them to kind of allow them to kind of get into the death zone here and then i can swing around with the warhammer and we'll just have them in this kind of uh it's not really a ravine but we've basically got their backs against the wall and we should be able to alpha strike now with oculus we should at least take one of his arms off oh Fully destroyed, very nice. Enemy I think at this point in the game you can start to see the benefit that we get from the Lost Tech weapons. Just it puts you like that UAC 20 <laughs> like shot on the end boss and it just one shot and killed her. Um yeah, it makes just makes a monumental difference. We've got some nice percentages here as well, so I think we're gonna I think we have to go for the Centurion now, given it's got that AC-10. And they're missing the, all over the place here. They're having a bit of a disaster. We'll bring Vortex in first, which is going to keep hammering at uh, this Centurion. Hmm... Heat is not good here. Uh, let's just do this. Ooh, got some nice shots off there. Beautiful shots, actually. Um, that was lucky. I mean, we got the, the AC-10. And now it will be... Yeah, obviously not the UAC-20 uh, again. <laughs> I think that it did its one-trick pony in this particular mission. So I think I th what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that you can run a hot lance with lost tech. And as long as you are tactically like efficient, like I think I kind of have been in this mission, where you're not just like running at them with your AC weapons firing all the time, um, you can really start to like just manipulate the game to work for you very, very easily. Um, and you like I said, I mean, how often am I doing like full alpha strikes? Like not often. I'm I'm just conserving heat and picking them apart bit by bit. So yeah, just I think a lot of people who play BattleTech, not just this game, but in general. Um, oh, this is going to be nasty. Yeah, the dragon has a really nasty uh, physical attack. So, but we didn't get into the um, into the structure there, so that's good. And I think we will now just pound it to pieces as much as we can. It's a shame it's gone out of the range for our physical attack there. So we'll just do two ERS lasers here. And bring you back just to do um, another LRM volley with that impulse. Yep, he's being knocked down. I wouldn't actually mind a dragon. Uh, I, I still proclaim that Dragons in this game are actually pretty decent max. You just have to know what you're doing with them. It's really no good to um, 
to, if you're running that like stock load out with the AC5, it's pretty useless because you really want it to get in and do physical attacks because it has a really good physical attack like baseline. Uh, for a 60 ton mech anyway, it's, it's high and it's a fast mech so you can get into that position much easier. Much more so than you can like with the Warhammer. Like the Warhammer is, um, I believe, the hardest hitting heavy mech um, like in this game. And um, yeah, but you have to really... It's, as you like already in this we've seen it can't really get into position to do that physical attack it could it's just always a little bit short because it's quite a slow mech anyway i'm going to do i'm going to do a cold shot here on the head because i wouldn't mind a dragon so if we can start to injure that pilot after he's been knocked down that would be nice so he probably has another two points of health left so uh, what's he like he's got 150 on the center He's lost his AC5. I'm slightly trepidatious of his um, physical attack, though, because he can stand up and do that to Pegasus again, though. That's Oculus, and he's already taken one physical attack on. You see there, that torso. And if it hits on that other torso, it will actually blow it up. Um, so I might just stomp this guy into the ground <laughs> and uh, not bother about the salvage. 100 points of damage there. And this might finish him off. And it's another 100. And these uh, ERS lasers will fire now. There he goes. Pop. Yeah, I mean, I'm not that desperate for a dragon. So I don't really care that much. But um, hey ho. Mission successful, Commander. Nicely done. Dr. Mered, does the Argo have an empty storeroom that could serve as a makeshift brig? I'm sure that something could be arranged. Then arrange it and get a lock on Lady Espinosa's ejection pod. She's coming with us. I don't recall seeing Lady Espinosa ejecting from the Mac. I re recall her taking a one shot from a UAC 20 double plus. Um, no time to eject in that situation. So two million as sea bills. That's nice. There were no secondary objectives there. That was pretty textbook. Um, yeah, that was nice. I think I'm now sold on the fact that a good LRM platform is very, very useful in that mission. I think the even though he only got one kill, I think the the trebuchet was the bit the star of the show. There, he was doing a lot of the like out maneuvering on the on the mechs of the opposition. Uh, obviously, Sigma looks like the star of the show with those five kills, uh, but the only kill that mattered then was uh, the Delilah with that beautiful UAC twenty shot to the twenty to the uh, center torso. So, oh, we get one point of a dragon, and we've got two already. So we only need one point of a dragon to get um, to get the full thing. Excuse me. Oh, a PPC double plus. Thank you very much. Thirty per, for a plus thirty stability damage is lovely. Any other interesting equipment here? No, unfortunately not. Presume that came off um, off the um, the K two that we obliterated. Uh, speaking of the K2, I think I will take the K2 because it's sellable. It will be worth quite a few sea bills, will that? And we might as well just take the Wolverine as well. We can sell both of those. So I think we'll get a mission um, debriefing now, I'd imagine. I'll read through that. Oh, video. There goes the new Grange. No. Oh. Must be one of those lost tech invisible ejection pods that I've read so much about. <laughs> Family reunion in orbit of Anvelt. Victoria, I've been waiting three years for this. Are you enjoying your cell? I had it assembled just for you. Glow all you like, cousin. Your victory will be short-lived. Your pathetic little army may have carried you this far, but if you think that you can challenge the core systems, you're sadly mistaken. Our glorious army will grind your restoration to a bloody pulp. Save me the lecture and tell me what you were doing on Anvolt. Your father rules the directorate. You should be in a tower somewhere, not on a dusty little moon guarding a smuggling ship. Smuggling ship? Is that what Carossus thought the new Grange was? Is that what he told you? Oh, you poor dear fool. I would tell you what you've just done, but I don't want to spoil the surprise, and you'll find out soon enough. And you'll find out yourself soon enough. Um, 
we may need to have a talk with Lord Karasos. In due time, Oculus, for now I would have words with my cousin. Victoria, I loved you like a sister and you betrayed me. Your father had a knife to my back and you helped push it in. I need to understand why. If you'd ever really listened to him, you'd already know. He tried to teach you, cousin, to set you on a path to strength and prosperity, but you spat on his efforts and forced his hand and mine along with it. Forced your hand? Mastiff is dead because of you, our mentor, the man who taught you to pilot a mech. You put him in a camp and let him, let, left him to rot. Thousands of Oregon dead lie piled at your feet. The price of strength in our nation's future. For the glory of the reach, I'd pay it a hundred times over. You seem to be confusing want and cruelty for strength. They aren't the same thing. The destruction of your land should have taught you that. Actually, the UAC-20 double plus taught her that. Uh, little Lord McDerham, still my cousin's favourite pet, I see. I wonder if that pretty jar of yours is as fragile as it looks. One of these days we'll have to find out. You remind me of a war criminal I tangled with when I was working on the frontiers. She'd wound up in a cage too. I'll break any cage you put me in, Oculus, and then I will hunt you down. Our teacher's death will look mild by comparison. You will do nothing but rot in your cage. Your story's over, Victoria. You've lost. Is that what you think? Do you honestly believe my father hadn't planned for this? My capture means nothing. The jaws of our trap are already closing around your neck. You're just too blind to see it. You talk like a cartoon villain. Has everyone ever told you that? She really does. Uh, you mock me at your peril, mercenary. My father bends everyone to his will. The periphery nations, the successor states, everyone. You don't know what I've done for our people, the sacrifices I've had to make. You understand nothing and you never will. You're already, you've already lost this war, cousin. You'll die screaming and your restoration will die with you. I've heard enough. Cut off her comms. What do you want us to do with her, Lady Arano? The Argo is in the prison. She can't stay here. No, she can't. Lord Carissus lost a daughter to the Directorate, and we won't let to help him. I can't undo that wrong, but I can give him justice. We will transfer Lord Victoria to his custody, into his custody to be held until I say otherwise. Your call, Lady Arano. We'll set a course for Smithon uh, when we're ready. Conversation over, people. Let's get back to work. Very nice. I presume now we've got... yeah. Lord Irano here. Oh, sorry, Lord Irano. Lord Simon Carossus. Uh, Lady Irano, my staff have taken Lady Espinosa into custody. She is being escorted to a cell as we speak. A kind of fate than she deserves, perhaps, but I will adhere to the terms of our arrangement. While she remains in my custody, she will not be harmed. You are an honourable man, Lord Carossus. One day I hope to earn your support. You already have it. What you've done today feels like justice, Lady Rana, of a kind I never thought I'd live to see. I owe you a debt of thanks as well to Commander Durant. You did a yeoman's job on the new grange. You will never darken our skies again. Glad to be of service. Now let's discuss what you're doing for us in return. Yes, of course. Let's discuss your recompense. Your chief engineer tells me you found a hidden data archive on your ship and that you need my help to open it. It sounds to be quite the mystery. More than a mystery to me, Lord Carossus, my father believed that the Argo held something of great value, but he died before he could see it. I need to know what's on that drive, and you're the only one in the Reach who can open it for me. But better perhaps uh, that I give you the means to open it yourself. I have a device. I will have a device into your ship, an electronic code breaker of advanced design. Given enough time, it will chew through any encryption, even yours. With respect, I'm surprised that you own such a device, an intelligence um, agency like MI3 perhaps, but not a periphery lord. I felt the same way when High Lord Tamati brought it to me all those years ago. He told me that the device had been found in the possession of a Comstar presenter who had died in a Regan space. What she was doing of it, I will never know. What I do know is that your father would want you to have it, Kamea. He'd be quite proud of the leader you've become. Thank you, Lord Grossos. Simon, it means more to me than I can say. Speaking of proud fathers, do you have any news to share about your son? Has his condition improved since we last spoke? Somewhat, my lady. Otto's road to recovery will be long and difficult. The director did something to his mind on Weldry. I still don't have a clear picture of what, but the damage is both physical and mental. In truth, I fear that my boy has been damaged irreparably and that the Otto I knew is gone, but I cling to the hope that someday my son and I... That the son that I remember will return to me. He will, Simon, I know it. Otto is young and strong, and House Cross says he's nothing if not resilient. I'm afraid that I must take my leave of you now. I have forces to marshal and plans to make, but keep me apprised of Otto's condition. I will, my lady, farewell to you, and know you have earned the support of House Carossos. What you've done today doesn't erase the past, but, ha but, but perhaps we can still right the course of our people's future. For my part, I am willing to try. This is going on a long time. Uh, thank you, Lord Carossos. Okay, I think we're done there. Good. Um, right, so the engineer is going to look into the code breaking. Good. I think that will be it. Um, I think I can also, if I remember rightly, I think there are dragons on Smithon, like salvage points of dragons. Just pop in the star and have a look. Yes, there are. 
So I can actually get a dragon now for, what, 621,000 sea bills. I could do that. Maybe. We'll see. Um, yeah, it's... The mechs that I've got on the field at the moment, uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, I've got like a, a... I talked about this before I did that last priority mission. I've got the shutdown mech. I've got a like a, a long range um, like support mech. And then I've got like my like core lance here, all of whom I'm incredibly happy with. Um, the, the next mission we is one of the best missions in the game. We actually get to pilot some Lost Tech uh, Star League mechs, which is a real pleasure and at the end of that mission we actually get gifted one of those mechs so that will be our first assault mech um so that's going to be like a, another big game changer the, the first game changer really is getting either the trinity of mechs that i've talked about which is the warhammer the marauder or the orion um the first mech you get the first heavy assault mech level you get is usually the mech that you get at the end of the next priority mission um so I'm not really chasing mechs at the moment. I might just try and plow through the priority missions as much as I can. But we'll see. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm considering just kind of doing a couple of missions and then flying to the next priority mission and just doing it and recording it this evening. Um, but uh, not decided yet. Depends how hungry I get. Anyway, I think I'll leave that here. So I'll thank you very much for watching and I'll hopefully catch you again in the next episode.